And now we come to the part of the tutorial where we actually create our artwork. For the artwork, you're going to need to grab a digital camera, you're going to need to grab your actors, or the people who are going to play your characters, and go out and take a bunch of photos of them. Kind of like these. And what I'm going to do now um, in Illustrator, I've just started up a new document. I'm going to go to File, Place, and drop one of the pictures that I've taken into this document. Now you'll notice that I've already um, put this picture in black and white. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do that because Illustrator is capable of um, achieving this effect with color photos as well. Now that I've got the um, image in my document, I'm going to go to um, the options bar. If you can't see the options bar, of course, you can go to window and um, Now I'm going to go up to the options bar and click on a button here that says Live Trace. And this was a feature that came about in CS2. When I press Live Trace, what you'll notice is that um, Illustrator traces a vector around uh, my photograph. It's not looking terrific just at the moment. So what I'm going to do is um, go up here um, and click on this button, which opens the Tracing Options dialog box. Now when you've got this open, I always find it useful to press the preview button um, and then I can see all of the changes as I make them. The one thing I'm going to do here, you'll notice that there are a number of settings. Um, I'm going to have my image in pure black and white because I want to create a very, very stark uh, image in the style of Frank Miller. There are a number of defaults as well. Um, you'll notice there's one called Comic Art if you select that. Um, doesn't look terrific at the moment. Just adjusting the threshold, however, will clean up that image a lot and really give you, you can play around with it a little bit, a very stark black and white um, rendering of the image. What I'm going to do now is click on this object that I've um, applied the trace to, go to the edit menu and go to copy. Now I'm going to switch into um, Photoshop and I'm going to um, paste this traced image into my document. Now Photoshop is going to ask me how I want to put it in here. Now rather than converting it to pixels, I'm going to insert it as a smart object. And that way we can always go back into the image and manipulate it in Illustrator if we want to. Now first up you'll notice that um, the picture is quite huge. Um, what I'm going to do before I hit enter is just hold down the shift key and resize this image so it's, it's just a little bit larger than the panel I have here. Just like that. And now I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so now I, you'll notice over here in uh, my layers palette I have this smart object. If I were to double click on this, it would open the object in Illustrator and I could then edit it further before jumping back into Photoshop. Of course, uh, this image doesn't look terrific uh, when it's sitting on top of the frame that I've created. And here comes one of the most useful um, parts of this tutorial. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is something called a clipping mask. And in Photoshop, if I go over into my layers palette, you'll notice that I have um, my panel. Um, sitting here in the layers palette and above it I have my smart object. If I move the cursor in between these two and hold down the option key, that's the alt key on a PC, and click my mouse, what happens is that you'll notice there's this small arrow now pointing down to my panel. Every time I put an object above this, hold down the option key and click the mouse button, it'll um, clip any image above this panel um, to the panel. And if you look over here now, that object is completely contained uh, within the panel I've created. If I move it around with the Move tool, it stays inside that object. As you can see, this is a really great way not only to contain speech bubbles within a panel, um, but also lots and lots of other images. And now for the final part of this tutorial. 
I'm going to demonstrate or suggest a way that you can add um, a little bit more interest to uh, your comic book panels and to your comic book design. And what I'm going to do is um, just take a very, very simple image that I downloaded from a website, um, www.sxc.hu, um, which is a stock photography website where users share their pictures. And it's a really great source of royalty-free material. I'm going to go to File, um, Place, and I'm going to select a picture that I downloaded from this website. Um, it's just a simple coffee stain like this. And I'll hit enter because that's pretty much the size that I want it. I'm going to pick, um, position this coffee stain uh, over my image. And I'm going to change the blending mode in the layers palette to darken. And what you'll notice is it looks like um, this coffee stain has, um, you know, actually um, occurred on the, on the page and what I'm imagining is with a um, film noir comic like this one uh, you could potentially have coffee stains, blood stains, uh, smeared ink, fingerprints um, and all of those sorts of things covering um, your comic and adding to the texture and to the interest of it. So that's the end of the tutorial. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you create a comic using any of the techniques that I've outlined here, um, please feel free to leave a comment um, and a link to that. I'd love to see it. Uh, I've demonstrated some really, really basic um, techniques and a way of working in Photoshop that should enable you to create uh, some really awesome, stark, black and white, wonderful looking Frank Miller style comics. Good luck and thank you.